Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365 and today we're gonna talk about what you do when life gives you lemons. Hey y'all, so not a video I was uh, looking forward to making, but I figured it was time I um, put up some of my thoughts on what's going on with Fisker. Um, there's already been some good content from some of the other YouTube channels out there that are Fisker owners, uh, which are the ones I do like to, to listen to and see what they're saying. And yeah, unfortunately, Fisker's in a bad way. And I think a lot of it or all of it was self-inflicted um, until maybe towards the end when they started getting some bad press, um, which, you know, one way or the other, who knows why that was happening. But yeah, Fisker certainly didn't uh, help themselves out with releasing the car, uh, before the software was ready for showtime. Um, and as you know, I put out my last video was about kind of mapping how they did on their, their software roadmap. And I, I did say that, you know, everything that happens at this point forward with Fisker is going to be, uh, dictated by how they execute that roadmap. And unfortunately now it doesn't look like they're going to be able to, um, you know, Fisker's, um, take, been taken off the stock exchange, the New York stock exchange. Um, they're starting to liquidate the existing vehicles that they do have. Um, and honestly, right now, if you try to go on their website and try to buy one, there's one location in Atlanta, which maybe you can go there and get them from. It's hard to tell how many vehicles they actually even have here in the United States. Obviously, if they built all these things in Austria, I can't imagine they're going to try to ship all those over here now. So they'll probably try to sell what they've got in the States that they haven't already delivered and try to make whatever money they can and then go from there. But it looks like this is kind of headed towards um, some type of scenario that we're expecting. You know, Fisker was hoping that they would get an investment from an OEM. Uh, rumors were Nissan. That was all contingent on a $150 million influx of, of money that was supposed to come in. We're not sure who was that, who that was from. Um, you know, maybe it was from Henrik himself and, <laughs> and he got cold feet, who knows, but all that fell through. So now Fisker's kind of in a real bad way. Um, they're trying to sell these vehicles for cheap, which unfortunately just undercuts all the kind of loyal Fisker pre-order holders that have been with them for years, um, and bought the vehicles at full price. And now we can't resell them. And for those of you that are like me, whose vehicle is not even registered under their name yet, even though they've taken delivery, um, you can't even sell it if you wanted to. Um, and then again, if you're like me, if you've got the old software, I took delivery in January and I got the software from uh, the one that was being delivered with vehicles from October, you know, so I'm like two or three software versions behind. We're about to hit April. I'm about to be another software version behind. Um, people like me, you know, we've got errors that are popping up that you can't get the car into drive or reverse on the first several attempts. So you can't really use the car for like drop off and things like that. Cause you're just not sure if you're going to be able to get the car moving, um, without trying multiple times. And sometimes the car engages in a parking brake or into park, um, while you're at a light or while you're driving in reverse slowly. So that's unfortunate. And that was stuff that I've mentioned in, um, in past reviews, but I always kind of gave Fisker the benefit of the doubt to say that, you know, these are all things that can be corrected by software. And I've driven plenty of electric vehicles to know that that's always a possibility, but again, comes down to execution and Fisker, um, everything that's going wrong with the company is about poor management and poor execution. I mean, they've built a good vehicle, uh, as far as quality of build, um, the ideas that Henrik put into it, I think are fantastic or unique. The solar roof, uh, taco trays, though some people hate them. I kind of like, at least they're trying stuff out, you know, um, California mode, which is awesome. And I think a lot of EV manufacturers are going to steal that idea. Um, honestly, Rivian kind of did that with R2. Um, the windows in the back don't totally open up, but they kind of flare out these Fisker ones go down. That's another thing. Mine have never gone down. Um, and I know that's something they fixed with a software update. I don't have that update. Um, and again, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because I'm familiar with EVs, but you know, that time is now coming past. So I wanted to put this video together just to kind of, um, maybe give some advice or some thoughts on what people in each of the buckets should do. Um, I kind of see Fisker owners or potential Fisker owners in four different places. The first one being, 
you took delivery of your Fisker, you've got updated software, uh, they've replaced your vents, because I know a lot of people have Fiskers with vents that don't work, like mine. Um, you know, they've sent me the vents, but there's, uh, yeah, there's no, I have, I've never had a service visit, so there's no way those vents are going to get put in. Um, but yeah, if you've got a vehicle that works, has updated software, you know, and if you like it, then keep it, enjoy it, drive it. It's going to work fine. It's an EV. The unfortunate part of that is it'll remain to be seen if you get future software updates. And if you're an Ocean One owner, some of those one benefits, we'll just have to wait and see how they handle that. Hopefully, hopefully they've got a plan for that and people will get there, get some of the stuff that they were expecting. Um, if you're a Fisker owner like me, that's got an old software, that's got errors and bugs that legitimately keep you from driving your car on a day-to-day -day basis um, or are a safety concern, I would say submit tickets on everything um, that you've got and keep records and printouts of those tickets. Don't do it through the phone app. Um, don't do it through phone. Um, send an email to Fisker Support so you've got documentation that it was submitted um, that actually write, spells out what you said that submittal was and keep records of all of that. Um, I was fortunate enough to do that for most of my stuff. Some of the things I did do through the app or through the phone. Um, so I've kind of have to retroactively kind of find a way to document that. Um, and then there are avenues for folks that have cars that just can't be driven on a day to day basis or that, um, that are unsafe that you can pursue. Um, and I'm trying one of those options, uh, for me and I've already got some kind of traction going in that direction. So as that goes further, I'll put up a separate video just explaining what I'm doing there. Um, but I don't want to get into all that in too much detail on this video, just cause it, 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 it involves some legal stuff. So we'll wait on that. But, uh, um, from the heading of my video at the beginning, um, you know, you can kind of tell which Avenue I'm taking there. Then the third bucket of people is people who have pre-orders, but haven't taken delivery of your Fisker yet. Um, what I'll tell to those folks is for now, you just got to cancel that. Um, don't take delivery of this vehicle, even though it had a lot of potential um, and was just so close to the finish line and they just didn't do it, I think, because they were starting to run out of cash and they got these out before that software was ready. But if you've got a pre-order, don't take delivery of the vehicle right now. Wait to see where the company ends up. Um, there's no way they're going to be able to sell these vehicles for the price they sold them to these early pre-order orders after all this. So you're going to get it cheaper than what you committed to paying for it anyway. So cancel that order. Um, and for those of you that are considering buying one of those cheap Fiskers that they're selling right now, um, I would say if you're, if you know what you're getting going in, uh, you know, watch the videos that are out there. Um, at those prices, it's not bad. I mean, that sport at 25K is pretty good. Um, even the extremes, if you get an extreme with a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack for 40 K, um, and, uh, that's not bad just for the batteries alone. So even if you're somebody who's interested in scrapping and selling, you could probably come out ahead. If you're somebody who just wants to buy the vehicle for that price, it's not bad. Uh, maybe eventually you'll be able to use the Fisker as a home backup or have somebody figure out a way to do that aftermarket. Um, that's a lot of battery. That's a lot of battery, uh, that you can use for other things. And, uh, and then maybe you can use the inside of the Fisker as like an ADU in your yard. And when it's parked by your house as a home backup, pop open that sunroof, pull out the taco tray. You got your laptop going, you've got the screen, you got some good music. Um, maybe not the worst thing in the world, but, uh, yeah, obviously buying those cheap Fiskers that you got to go in with a grain of salt and, but everybody now knows kind of what they're getting into. Right. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the four buckets and, um, and you got to just kind of figure out what's best for your situation. But again, for mine, what I'll tell everybody is keep records of all your service tickets, um, keep records of any service or anything like that, that you are getting. And if the, um, if the issues have been resolved or not, and, uh, and then there's some avenues that I think you can pursue. Um, and I will, um, and I will certainly give everybody updates on what I'm doing in that regard and how it's going. So yeah, y'all, it's, it's pretty disappointing because like I said, I had a lot of hope for this vehicle and I still sitting inside of it. I love it, you know? Um, but it just, uh, it's just not, doesn't look like it's going to work out, uh, the way we had all hoped. So anyways, that's, uh, that's my initial thoughts on what's going on. Um, 
and I will continue to keep you guys updated. So keep watching the channel. And of course, we'll have other car reviews. And then if you've got any questions, um, you know, for me related to this stuff, uh, be sure to ask them in the comments. Thanks for watching, y'all. Hang loose.